All right, get, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Longhorn Introduction and Deep Dive. My name is Fan Lee. I'm the senior software engineer at SUSE. I'm also one of the core maintainers of Longhorn. I have been look, working on Longhorn for almost five years now. Uh, so on the screen, you can find the Longhorn website. Uh, first, we want to have a quick update about community adoption. So, up and so far, Longhorn have 141,000 nodes running globally, and which represent 44% increase year over year, which is a very good growth rate. And uh, we have 3,700 uh, users across multiple Slack channels. We have 6.1k GitHub stars, and uh, you can find more metrics. More metrics are available at uh, metrics.longhorn.io. And by the way, the data collected over here are all anonymous data, and it is ZD, uh, GDPR compliance. And we also publish the source code uh, uh, at Longhorn slash upgrade responder. So next slide, I want to quickly uh, intro introduce about uh, Longhorn. For the use case, Longhorn is a reliable, scalable storage solution for uh, Kubernetes stateful workload. So basically, if you have a uh, stateful uh, workload, like uh, if you have a port and if the port need a P Kubernetes PV or PVC, then you can use Longhorn to dynam dynamically provision and manage those PV and PVC. Longhorn is a hyper-converged solution. What it means is uh, it, it can run on the same cluster as our Google Cloud. And Longhorn is very reliable. It is crash consistent. It has multiple layers of protection against data loss, including building, uh, building snapshot and external backups. Uh, it is one of the, I think one of the most noticeable feature of Longhorn is very easy to use. It's simple. It is a one-click installation. You user can install Longhorn using Coop Control, Helm, or uh, GitOps solution like uh, Fleet or Flux CD. It is very easy to maintain and easy to understand and easy to recover from the worst case scenario. For example, if the cluster burned down, you can recover the data from external backup. Or if you have uh, data from, uh, from the disks, you can, you can also recover from it. Uh, and Lohan can do live upgrade, like, uh, like upgrade uh, without interrupting the Google load. So basically, when you upgrade Lohan, you don't have to scale down the Google load. Uh, Longhorn will uh, be able to uh, live upgrade underneath it. Uh, so some biggest feature of Longhorn, uh, we, for the Kubernetes persistent uh, volume support, we support block PVC mode, and we also support file system PVC mode. For the access mode, we support read-write once and read-write many. Read-write read once means uh, one node can access the Longhorn PVC at a time, and read-write many is mean uh, multiple nodes can access the Longhorn at a, at a time. Uh, we support like, most of the CSI feature, for example, volume dynamic provisioning, uh, like dynamic attachment, CS CSI snapshot, CSI cloning, CS CSI restore, CSI expansion. Uh, some, and then for some capability of Longhorn volume, by default, Longhorn volume is going to be thin provisioning. It means uh, by default, when, the, when you create a Longhorn volume and you don't write any data to it, yet it, it will not consume any space on the node. And it has a snapshot feature. It supports streaming, expand, live upgrade, and live migration. About the I.O. performance, we have some feature to increase uh, uh, perf the I.O. performance. Uh, the first feature is data locality. Longhorn is going to try to put the uh, data of the volume on the same node as a pod, so that uh, it increases the performance. Another feature is strict local volume. Strict local volume means uh, the data of the volume is fixed on a, a node, and the volume cannot be attached to a different, different node. The benefit of the strict local mode is uh, it, it shortens the data path. Therefore, it has better performance. Uh, right now, uh, Longhorn has V1 data engine. However, we are 
working on the next generation of data engine. We call it V2 data engine. Uh, V2 data engine is based on SPDK, and I will have more detail about that uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, Longhorn has an intuitive UI. Uh, for the storage and f storage topology, Longhorn support uh, adding V1 disks as a file system mount point. However, for V2, uh, Longhorn can consume the block device directly. We support the replica scheduling anti affinity. What it means is uh, when you, uh, you can specify, uh, you can instruct Longhorn to put the replica of the volume on different disks, different nodes, or, is it, or even different zones. Uh, it, it, it will help in case uh, when a node go down, uh, uh, you don't lose all the data because the data might be on a different node. Uh, Longhorn has, for the data protection, Longhorn support data replication, so each Longhorn volume gonna have multiple replicas. And we support data encryption, uh, bit rot protection, what, it, the, what the bit rot protection means is uh, when the hardware break down, Longhorn can help to detect and notify you. For the data service, Longhorn support in cluster snapshot and out of cluster backup and restore. We also support disaster recovery volume. And for the space usage management, we uh, in the recent release, we introduced some recurring uh, snapshot cleanup job, which help to reduce the space usage of Longhorn volume. And we also support backup compressions to reduce the space usage on the external backup store. Uh, next, a quick overview of the Longhorn architecture. Uh, when the user start a port, and if the port is using a Longhorn PVC, uh, Longhorn is going to receive the attachment notification from CSI flow. And the first step in the attachment flow is Longhorn is going to create multiple replica processes. For example, over here, Longhorn create one replica process on the node number one using one dig on the node number one, and another replica process on the node number two using another dig on the node number two. And after all the replica process become running, Longhorn is going to create an engine process connecting to those replica process. And finally, Longhorn is going to expose the engine uh, as a local block device. And if applicable, Longhorn is going to format the block device and mount the block device on a certain path so that couplet can uh, make it available to the port. Uh, to the port. And similarly, if you have another port using Longhorn PVC, similar flow happen. And if you have another port using Longhorn PVC, we're going to have similar flow. One thing that I want to emphasize over here is because each Longhorn volume has multiple replicas, therefore, uh, for example, when the node number two over here go down, uh, the Longhorn volume still have a running replica, a healthy replica on the node number one. and the port can continue to read and write the data to the replica on the node number one. Uh, some quick update about the latest feature release, which is 1.7. In the release 1.7, we have many features. We, we support periodic and on-demand full backups. We support uh, the high availability of backing image. So when the user create a backing image now, uh, Longhorn is going to automatically make multiple copies of it. And uh, we support the read write many volume fast failover. In the past, when a read write many volume crash, Longhorn might take up to 120 seconds to recover. However, in this uh, 1.7 release, Longhorn only take like 45 seconds to recover from the crash. And we support the volume locality for the read write many volumes. What it means is the user can specify the scheduling for uh, the manager of the read write many volume. We also have the, the auto balance pressure dicks. What it means is uh, Longhorn is going to automatically rebalance the replica, like move the replica from a full disk to an empty disk so the data are balanced across the disks. We support the net, like dedicated dedicated storage network for the read write many volume uh, to, in, 
to improve the performance of the read write many volume. And we have the new Longhorn COI. So in the past, the user can control Longhorn using coop control, like the user can do most of the operation using coop control. However, there are some certain operations that cannot be active using coop control. Therefore, we introduced Longhorn COI. Uh, some feature for the V2 data engine, uh, in the release 1.7, we support a uh, different DIX driver for SPDK. We support the AIO driver, NVMe driver. We have the online rebu replica rebuilding for the V2 data engine, and we have the file system trimming for V2 data engine. For the incoming 1.8 release, which is re will be released in quarter one, in the first quarter of 2025, we are heavily focused on f completing the feature set for the V2 data engine. Uh, the feature like configurable CPU cores, dynamic SPDK, dynamic scheduler to reduce the CPU usage of SPDK. Uh, and we, we're gonna make some improvement to the online repli replica rebuilding, for example, snapshot checksum and delta replica rebuilding to, re to speed up the re rebuilding speed. We, uh, for the data recovery, we're gonna implement the auto salvage feature. We're gonna implement the disaster recovery volume for V2 data engine. We're gonna have volume life upgrade, volume, volume life migration, backing image for, for V2 data engine, volume expansion. So all of those features are al already available in V1 data engine, but now we are trying to uh, completing the same feature set for the V2 data engine. Um, we also work on some uh, other features, like having multiple backup stores for a single cluster, and the Longhorn CEO is gonna have more capability. And next slide, I want to uh, deep dive into the differences between the V1 architecture and the V2 architecture. On the screen, you are seeing the front end of the V1 architecture. When the application writes the I.O., it's gonna go through the the file system layer. It's gonna go through the file system layer and, and then the I.O. is forwarded to the iSCSI block device layer and the iSCSI initiator gonna forward the I.O. to the Longhorn TZTD and Longhorn TZTD forward the I.O. to the Longhorn engine process via a customized protocol of a unique socket domain. And the Longhorn engine gonna forward the I.O. to the Longhorn replica process uh, Longhorn replica process could be on the same node or it could be on a remote node. And finally, Longhorn replica process gonna write the I.O. down to, the, to a SPA file on the host file system. And if you have, uh, sorry, where's my mouse? If you have multiple replicas, then the engine gonna forward the I.O. to multiple replicas at the same time. For the V2 data engine, uh, for the front end, when the uh, V2 data engine is based on SPDK, which is a storage performance development kit uh, created by Intel, and when, when the application writes the I/O, it's gonna the same thing. It's gonna go through the go to the file system layer, and the fa and then uh, and then it's gonna forward the I/O to the block device created by the NVMe initiator and the I.O. is forwarded to the Lohan engine via NVMe over OF protocol, and Lohan engine forwards the I.O. to the replica. Lohan replica in V2 data engine is, uh, contains a SPDK BDF, and it is exposed by SPDK target. And similarly, if the volume has multiple replicas, then the engine can uh, forward the I.O. to multiple re replicas at the same time, the engine over here is acting as a RAID 1 controller, so it forwards I.O. to multiple replicas at the same time. So we have, we have, we, we have uh, run some benchmark for the V2 data engine. Uh, one, of the, one of the most imp important uh, feature of the V2 data engine is it has much better performance, and we, put, we are putting a lot of effort into um, uh, uh, into making it fast and uh, uh, powerful. So on the screen, you can see the performance of uh, 
V2 data engine on this uh, machine. This machine is uh, is having an SPDK. Uh, uh, sorry, this machine is uh, having an NVMe disk uh, with a pretty powerful and fast. It the the local file system, uh, the baseline, which is uh, testing directly on the local host file system, can go up to 825k. And you can see that the Longhorn V2 data engine can keep up with the fast NVMe disks. It can also it can achieve like thousands of IO ops per second. This is not possible uh, with the Longhorn V1 data engine. Therefore, we are developing the Longhorn V2 data engine. And if the volume has multiple replica, then the IO would have to travel through the network. Therefore, the IO ops will be dropped. Uh, depend on how fast the network is. In this case, the IO drop like down to 450k IO ops per second, which is still a very big number. Uh, for the bandwidth, we observe the similar behavior. Longhorn V2 data engine can achieve close to the native disk performance. In this case, it is close to 3.5 gigabyte per second, which is uh, the maximum number that the native disk can reach. And same thing if the volume has multiple replicas, I will have to travel through the network and it will slow down a little bit. For the latency, uh, we can see that the V2 data engine has about 40 to 60 microsecond, microsecond overhead comparing to the native disk performance. And if we have rep remote replica, then of course latency will go up. And, uh, but one good thing that we notice is uh, the late latency of the three replica volumes is like uh, almost equals to the latency of one replica plus the network latency. So what 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 that means is Longhorn introduced a very minimal overhead. Uh, next, I will have a quick demo about how to uh, use Longhorn V2 data engine. In this demo, I will, the first step I'm adding, I'll try to add a, an NVMe disk to the Longhorn system, and then I'll create a storage class to use a V2 data engine, and then I'm gonna create a PVC from the storage class, and then deploy a port using the PVC, and then run the file benchmark inside the port, and finally, take a, back, uh, take a snapshot and take a, an external backup. Uh, let go out of these slides. Yeah, actually, I already, I already made a recorded demo. Uh, so the first step is I'm trying to add an NVMe disk to the node 01 over here. So you can see right now it has 3.5 uh, terabyte storage. And right now it is having the V1 disk. I want to add a new disk for, for the V2 data engine. And we can name the disk as a V2 disk. And the disk type is going to be block because, as I said before, in the V2 data engine, Longhorn is going to consume the block device directly. And uh, for the path, we would have to specify the BDF number of NVMe disks. And in order to find the BDF number of NVMe disks, I'm going to access it into the node 01. And I'm trying to add the NVMe 3 disks to the Longhorn system. And we can find the BDF by running the ls command. In this case, the BDF number is 0041000.0. And we're going to copy that number, paste it here, enable it, and save it. We would have to wait a little bit for Longhorn to recognize the new disks.
And by the way, you can do all of those steps using Cook Control or Jamo Manifest. I just using Longhorn UI for the sake of intuitive. Now we can see that the disk is ready, and Longhorn has seven terabyte storage on this disk uh, on this on the Note Zero One. And next step, I'm going to create a storage class using the V2 data engine. The experience is going to be very simple and similar to V1. We just need to specify the data engine as V2. And then I'm going to create a PVC from this storage class. Uh, we just want to make sure that the storage class was created. And we're going to create a PVC. I want to create a 200 gig PVC. So let's edit the size. OK, let's apply it. When the user applies the PVC JAMO, Longhorn going to dynamically provision a new volume. So you can see we have a new 200 gigabyte Longhorn volume. Data engine is V2, and the size is 200 gig. Next, uh, I'm going to create a port using the PVC. So the port going to use the PVC. It mounts the PVC to the slash data location. It has liveness prop to make sure the, the volume is functional. And it is uh, using an open SUSE image. I'll make sure the port is running. So when you create a port, Longhorn is going to automatic, automatically attach the volume to the same node that the port is running on. So you can see the volume is attached. It has three replicas. So when a node goes down, it's no problem. So this is the file command that I'm going to use to benchmark the sequential read bandwidth. But before doing that, we need to exact into the port. And we're going to have to install file. This one will take a little bit of time, so I'll skip forward. Now file is installed. We can run, uh, we can run the file benchmark now. OK, this is a command that I'm going to use. This command will test a sequential read bandwidth of the, of the Longhorn PVC. And I'm using the size of 220 gig to avoid the casting effect. Uh, effect. 200, uh, one, sorry, 120 gig. 120 gig is big enough so that we don't hit the casting effect. So when we run the file command, the first step that file do is uh, it's going to prepare a file of 120 gig, so it would take a little, a little bit of time. So over here, you can see that the actual size is going up because file is making a big file. So we can skip this process. Skip forward. It's it going to stop until it hit 120 gig. OK, it looks like it's closed. So after file finish creating a, an, an 120 gig file, it's going to start the test. You can see on the screen right now the sequential read bandwidth is about 3.5 gigabyte per second, which is close to the native disk performance of the NVMe disk. Yeah, 3.5 gig per second. And similar to Longhorn V1, you can take a snapshot. So we just take a snapshot. We have a new snapshot on the bottom. And we can, and then after that, we can create a backup from the snapshot. 
very simple experience. And by the way, you can uh, use a JAMO manifest or cook control to do all those steps. So it takes a, uh, a little bit of time for the backup to start. OK, now the backup ha has been created. It's going to take a little bit, like, it's going to take a long time because this snapshot has a lot of data, like 120 gig. And I think that concludes my demo in the next slides. We can have the Q&A se Q section. And by the way, if you have feedback, please uh, give us feedback on the, on the link on the screen. Is there any question for me? Yes. Could, could you speak to the microphone? Sorry, I couldn't hear it. expand my disk, yeah, I would probably would go about it of um, like adding a disk to VMware and um, going to my server and growing the file system and hoping like now along more would like you know have more storage. Um, so I mean so what's so what's the benefit or different of like adding it in the Longhorn UI and using like the NV do you mean like if you are using like cloud provider, then the cloud provider already has well, storage? Well, I'm using on prem. I'm like it's on prem, and I'm using I'm running uh, Ubuntu servers, and let's say I have a hundred like I'm using, I have like a hundred gig file system. And this might even I'm not, this, this might not even be relevant. I, I was just kind of thinking about it. Like I would I would I can't even recall how I. I, I think I would, I'm pretty sure that I would have like a file system for Longhorn storage. Uh, but now, I mean, I'm not even sure now. I think. But like, but when I'm getting out, like, I'm thinking that I would grow the file system within like the VM instead of like within the UI. How do you grow the file system within the VM? No, what, what I'm saying is like, I would think that's like if I would needed to grow the, the the storage, I like just off the top of my head, I would think, okay, I probably need to go in and like extend my file system on the VM, versus going in the UI and like expanding the, the disk. Uh, Does that make any sense? Just like, hmm? yeah. Yeah, like like on, on the VM. Uh, yeah, I mean like. Yeah, I mean like doing it doing it inside the VM, like versus in the UI. Uh, the volume expansion uh, are, like always like, are, uh, are already available on V1 volume. Uh, do you mean like you have a machine and you have some disks for Longhorn already? And what happens when you add a new disk and how do you instruct Longhorn to, to consume the new disk? Is it, is it your question? Um, not exactly. I mean, I was just um, like if I, needed to, if I needed more storage for Longhorn, like if I'm running out of Yes. My volumes are, are, are running out of storage. Yes. I need to increase the volumes. I'm yes. pretty sure I've done this. I'm pretty sure I did it like on the V, like in, in the OS. Yes. And, and just, yeah, just did a, uh, like, a, uh, like I grew the, the, the volume group and the, lo the, the logical volume in the OS. Is it, is, is it similar? Okay. I think I know what you're talking about. So let's say that your node is using LVM. Yes. So yes. I mean, so you have an LVM volume and you go in and you do the LVM for, uh, uh, resize. Yeah. Yes. 
that is part of my question. Like, yes, I mean, that, that is a legit way to have a larger file system for Longhorn to use. Yeah. Right? So my question is, what is the difference or what is the benefit of going in the UI and, and, and growing the file system? So you're going, so the UI is only going to recognize the change to, because it's part of the UI is concerned here, it's a So if you're using LVM and you resize the LVM, yeah. it's going to be a little weird to it because you're like, hey, this is a physical drive and all of a sudden it got bigger. Um, but it's supposed to just be TFS. But the version 2, because it treats it as a block device, you can see that the block device got bigger. Whereas when you're using it, so the version 1 uses But the, the you should correct me if I'm wrong. As long as a, if you change the volume size, so you have like an OT system, and you have a terabyte here, a terabyte here, and you're doing that thing essentially where you want to show everything you see, and it does what you show and where it's going to run and stuff. You expand this other one. It's not really going to change this other thing. You know, so you can just take both of them so that they're Available size so you can create more features. Mm -hmm. You said that's right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, it, I'll have to probably play around with it some myself. Well, the I, best I, thing I would say <laughs> is just get on to there. Yeah. yeah. When you were in that situation, definitely hit us up and start thinking and run the problem. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Is there any other question? And by the way, I will be at Longhorn Kiosk tomorrow. So if you, have, if you want to discuss more, then uh, feel free to visit, visit us at the Longhorn Kiosk in the pavilion section of the KubeCon. Is there any other question for me? Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask, like, uh, are there any issues when moving the wall? Can you, can you speak close to the mics? Uh, so the migration from V1 to V2. When you move the volumes, are there any issues on larger clusters, like maybe 1,500 volumes? I see. Cluster? Are there any known issues? I see. So you, the question was, uh, when V2 data engine is available, what is the migration process from V1 for the, vo for the V1 volume to the V2 to have the V2 data engine? The quick answer for that is right now we don't have a way to automatically migrate them yet. The user have to manually do it. However, we are working on the, uh, we we are we are investigating it, and uh, I think we might be able to come up with an automated automated tools to do the migration. And then I have is the migration through UI or the Longhorn CLI or the Longhorn the, the question about Longhorn CLI? Yeah, yeah, no the. Volume migration, like you said, it needs to be done manually. So is that through UI or um, we can use the Longhorn CLI to do that? Uh, right now, the user have to do it manually. Like you already have the V1 PVC, you can create a new PVC using the V2 data engine and and attach them to the same port and do the copy manually. Thanks. Thank you. Because Longhorn has replication, is it not recommended to do a raid on the underlying nodes anymore because you already have some sort of built-in replication? Yes, I think so. So I have a question about uh, volume group snapshot. Do you have that on your uh, roadmap at all? Yes, it is on roadmap. Uh, we are targeting for Longhorn 1.9.0. Awesome. And uh, I just wrote that down. also, um, I, I, I'm pretty definite this is a no, but just to make sure, uh, is there any means to back up and restore across V1 and V2? Can you say it again, sorry? Uh, is it possible to uh, create snapshot backups on V2 and restore to V1? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. We are, yeah, actually, we are thinking that is one possible way to migrate from V1 to V2. Like, user can take a backup of the V1 volume and restore the backup to the V2 volume. So it, it might be one way to do the migration, uh, but we are investigating it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Hey, so uh, my question is, uh, uh, 
So uh, I'm new to Longhorn. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm currently with uh, CEF uh, for basically uh, to provide uh, dynamic uh, volumes for uh, groups. Uh, uh, what is benefit of Longhorn compared to CEF? Uh, so if we don't take into account uh, as a result as a resource consumption by itself, so it's heavier. I think the biggest advantage of Longhorn is it's simple. Uh, Comparing to self. Okay, can you replicate uh, between two clusters? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, can you replicate uh, volumes uh, uh, between Longhorn clusters? So, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, so you have this in site one, and uh, you want to keep uh, another uh, in DR site. Uh, is there a way to replicate data? Do you mean replication across different yes. Uh, yes. data region? Yes. So basically, uh, is a built-in uh, like replication mechanism inside Longhorn to replicate volumes from one side to another side. I see, I see. Uh, if you want to have one replica, like if you want to have one replica, so, no, sorry, no. the question was, can Longhorn replica, replicate the data across multiple? Between two different clusters. Yeah, different cluster on multiple reason. And the quick answer is no. Okay. The reason is, the first reason is uh, doing replication across multiple zone, like when the replica are very far away from each other, the latency for the volume will be so it's not, uh, very big. So it's not a replica that is tied to one uh, uh, PV, so, or, or, or PVC. So it's a replica, I mean, on the storage side. So, I mean, uh, so, uh, uh, let's say, on primary side, uh, we have uh, Kubernetes with so we have like, a few Kubernetes clusters and one a huge uh, storage cluster? No, it's not possible. Like, we cannot install Longhorn in one cluster and provide storage for another cluster. It's not possible. OK, yeah. so it's only one. Yeah, we are hyper-converged solution. What it means is we are running on the same cluster as a Google. OK. And uh, I want to. One uh, large cube in one side. Uh, with storage, and you want to replicate data to another uh, cluster? Uh, we ha for, for that feature, we have the disaster recovery volume. Uh, what disaster recovery volume do is, for example, if you have volume on the cluster A in the, in the data region A, uh -huh. and you have a backup cluster on the data region B, you can create a disaster recovery volume on the backup cluster in the data region B, mm -hmm. and Longhorn is going to peri periodically sync the data of the volume inside cluster A to the disaster recovery volume on the cluster B. And when the cluster A burn down, you can quickly recover uh, using the, like, activate the vo disaster recovery volume on the cluster B and have the data ready. But but yeah. that feature will not be like it. It will not be real time replication. It, it like it. It will take like, for example, for every thirty minutes we sync the data over. So it's not going to be real time. Uh, so basically, on primary side, you take snapshot and replicate the snapshot. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You're right. Very similar to it's I think yeah. Podwork. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, I think time is up. Thank you so much.